everybody, welcome back. Another episode of Goodreads. Today we're going to start on the left bundle branch block. And of course, we have to start with a little bit of conduction anatomy. So once again, here's our general layout of the heart. SA node, AV node, right ventricle, left ventricle. So the impulses obviously start in the SA node, travel through the Bachmann bundle or inner atrial pathways to the AV node. There in the AV node, the impulse actually takes a temporary pause. That's the PR interval on the 12 lead EKG. And this is physiologically to allow for the ventricles to fill. Then from the AV node, the impulse travels to the bundle of Hiss, and then from there, you split into the right bundle, and then today we're going to be discussing the left bundle. So from the bundle of Hiss, the left bundle comes off, actually splits into two different fascicles, the left anterior fascicle, which runs along the anterior wall of the left ventricle, and the left posterior fascicle, which runs along the posterior wall of the left ventricle. Kind of difficult to visualize, so I'm going to try my best to show some anatomical terms. And this is what I'm just talking about. So from the AV node, here's our bundle of Hiss that comes on our left bundle. And then this anterior fascicle, if you can imagine, it kind of comes towards you, runs along the anterior wall. And then that left posterior fascicle runs along the back side of the heart there. And so that's maybe difficult to visualize from the anterior view. But if we switched it and we looked at a lateral view, the AV node here, so if we imagine just a brief bundle of Hiss, left bundle coming off, this anterior fascicle traveling the anterior wall, and then this posterior fascicle actually coming around and wrapping the posterior aspect of the heart there, of the left ventricle. So that may be a little bit easier, but there are two different fascicles. You have the anterior fascicle in the front, posterior fascicle in the back. And so let's talk briefly about why we see what we see on the 12 lead EKG. So once again, we're going to talk about V1 and V6. Those are our main leads that we're going to be using to identify bundle branch blocks. And so from the AV node, the impulse travels down the bundle of Hiss, down the left bundle. And then let's imagine we have a block, right? We have the left bundle branch block here. And so what's happening is that the impulses will continue down the right bundle branch block as normal. There's nothing wrong with the right bundle, but if you notice, this arrow is actually moving away. Every impulse at this point is moving away from V1. So you're going to get this very, very, what's known as deep S wave in V1, right? All those impulses are traveling away. So S waves usually on almost actually all the time on the 12 lead, if you have an S wave, that impulse is moving away from that lead. So in V1, that's what you're going to remember is that deep S wave. So since the right bundle has depolarized normally, there's going to be now a right to left, very slow myocyte to myocyte conduction from the right ventricle to the left ventricle. Now, looking at the perspective of V6 in this situation, all the impulses in V6 are coming towards it, right? So even back from that initial bundle of Hiss up here, the initial part down the left main or the left bundle itself, the main part of the left bundle, all that impulse is traveling towards V6. Even this right bundle coming towards the right ventricle is still going towards V6. So that's for that reason, it's going to be entirely flipped. In V6, we're going to have a prominent R wave in V6. All those impulses are coming down directly in line with V6. And so you're going to get that prominent R wave. So briefly, I do want to talk about why there's some notching in some of these two different examples. And that's mainly just because this block doesn't always necessarily have to exist right here. The block could exist down here, it could exist in the left posterior fascicle, and in later videos, we'll talk a little bit more about identifying exactly where that block may be. This was just, I set this one arbitrarily here, but if there's a block in the left anterior fascicle or left posterior fascicle, the impulse may travel down one of those two just a little bit before it meets the block, and that's usually responsible for that um, kind of notching in, in the wave. That may not always be the case in every patient, and you kind of have to use a little bit of axis deviation to help figure out which one is which. But like I said, we'll cover that in future videos. But for the most part, I want you to remember V1, you're going to have the deep S waves. V6, you're going to have the prominent R waves. So what's the exact 12 lead criteria? You're going to have a wide QRS greater than 120 milliseconds, deep S wave in V1, and a prominent R wave in V6. So let's look at some case examples here. So in V1 out here, you're going to have that deep S wave there out in V1, and you're going to have a prominent R wave out in V6. A lot of people like to include a very slurred S wave too as well in V6. can also help you identify that as well. Here's another example. You're going to have again in V1 a very deep S wave in V1, and you're going to have a prominent R wave out in uh, V6 as well. Again, you have some slurring of the S wave that some people like to use as well. And of course, always a widened QRS. So in the next videos, we're going to kind of build on this, talk maybe a little bit more about left anterior fascicular blocks and left posterior fascicular.